let's go there. Game three last night. Listen, at times it felt like the Celtics were running away with game three. Get out the brooms. This thing is over. And then you blink and the Mavericks are right back in it. Uh, There were questionable calls. There was high drama. I saw Jason Tatum dunk on the entire Mavericks team. And then, as you said, Jalen Brown quietly, if you can believe it, quietly taking over a game late. And the Celtics take a commanding, dagger-like 3-0 lead on the Mavericks, George. Your boy Jalen Brown did it again. Hey, Jalen Brown, 30 points, 8 rebounds, 8 assists, 24 points coming in the second half, and just turned it on in the fourth quarter especially. Tatum went 1 for 5, so let's talk about the fact that he is 2 for 12 in the fourth quarter, the last two games in the series, but let's also highlight the Celtics' defense because the Mavericks are yet to break 100 in any single game throughout these finals, and while they went four minutes without a field goal in the fourth quarter and the drought was coming, Kyrie was hitting his shots, where was it? Jalen Brown, hey, credit Tatum. His only field goal was that vicious dunk, but then settles again for a sidestep three-pointer, his favorite shot that we all hate to see after that. But then you have Jalen Brown attacking the rim, going four for seven in the fourth quarter. Derek White clutch, thanks to Drew Holiday, being patient, being composed, and finding him out for a three for the assist. This Celtics team had just has too much and too many layers to them. And, of course, we got to highlight the fact that Luka Doncic fouled out in the fourth quarter. Yeah. But when Kyrie Irving is still hitting tough shots and giving them life, it's the defensive side of these Celtics. And it's also they just have so many guys that can answer the call that – they are just relentless and beating down a tired Mavericks team. You know, we watched it for. I said game two was the one that the Celtics gave away, how poorly they shot from three. Game three, all eyes on, though. No Kristaps Porzingis. We'll see if he can return at any point in these finals. But nonetheless, what's that energy boost and the hope it gives the Mavericks and the life that breathes into them? I mean, Luka and Kyrie finally went out and combined to get damn near 60, which is what they need to do if they have a shot at beating the Celtics. But it is the dudes that the Celtics have showing up again late in this game. I think that's well said. In fact, the whole time you were talking about that, I was thinking in my head about how now the narrative has shifted so much, and it's all because of the Celtics' dominance. Hear me out. When the Warriors were winning titles, it changed the NBA. Every team got shooters, and started shooting deep three-pointers. I mean, literally, the Boston Celtics right now don't exist without the Warriors' dominance. I think we can agree on that. But I bring them up because the Celtics are so dominant during this postseason run and the regular season. Just let's call it the season period. They have been so dominant, George, that they have completely flipped this narrative on its head in these finals. Remember... Coming into this, I believe we talked about this. Everyone was being hyperbolic, and I I remember we didn't make too much of it, but there were people suggesting that Luka and Kyrie were the greatest backcourt we've ever seen, George. Offensive, offensive, offensive. Offensive backcourt we've ever seen, right? Now, three games into this arse whooping that's happening, it is now... You know, Kyrie and Luka need some help. These other guys aren't getting it done. That's because of the dominance of what you just said. All the other pieces. out Now, Jalen Brown's cooking, don't get me wrong. And Tatum did pull to Tatum in the fourth quarter. I get it. But he still had a, a, a much better game. 31 as far, points. Yeah, it's a, a more efficient game. But the pieces around them are so good, George. And this team collective is so dominant that now it's changed the entire narrative around the Mavericks. We went from the greatest offensive backcourt of all time, question mark, to these guys need help. What do you want them to do? That's because of the Celtics' dominance. Yeah, it's victim of the moment to call them the greatest offensive backcourt of all time. But certainly when both of those guys are hitting their ceiling and Luka is 100% healthy, they have that to them. They have that type of explosive you know, potential at any point in this game. And give it to what Kyrie is. He's one of the most talented offensive players to ever play the game when he's clicking and his handles are there. You called it. He's going to get a second wind in Dallas. I said, ah, I think the defense got him figured out. But he goes out and does what he does, 27 points in this one, and was hitting shots at the end when Luka was MIA because he was on the bench with six fouls. But it just shows where the Celtics can stand step up. And it's Derek White, 
having no problem picking up Kyrie half court. Because I'm at the point, too, where Kyrie's the only guy going double him. No, they stay stubborn in the best way possible. And Derek White and Drew Holiday have the confidence, which they know. They can match up with him. They can stay step for step with him. And they can body him to get him uncomfortable and off balance and hitting some of these shots. So they're able to deter him. But yes, the Celtics team and the layers that they have to them, it just continue to take away the corners, continue to make them, you know, just shoot threes from everywhere else, but just not allowing role players to get going. Derek Jones only had two shots tonight. That guy was pivotal in the Mavericks' run to these finals. And you give a credit to the Celtics as a whole with Kristaps Porzingis out with that left leg injury. I'm not going to bother trying to pronounce it. But Xavier <laughs> Tillman playing significant minutes. Old man Al playing significant minutes as well. Yeah. These are the guys that have to step up with them yeah. down. Al Horford going 36. Now it's going to be tough in game four. Watch the dip one day off between these two. It's right. dangerous when he plays those type, but Xavier Tillman 11 minutes. Even you having Sam Hauser step up, but right. it was basically with Horford and Tillman holding down the front court. I expected Cornette and Brissett to show up. They didn't even leave the bench at all, but it shows the depth and what the Celtics have with their wings on what they're capable of and just getting someone I you know I think they'll regret that in game four of Horford getting that 36 minute mark anytime he's 30 plus minutes but they needed every minute of defense in this game because they played bad it was close at half they opened up the second half with an 8-0 run the Mavericks answer back with that 17-2 run, which took them late into the fourth quarter when it got to clutch time, but the Celtics answered the bell. And I think what I have to highlight in all this, I have it on my notes, is for Jalen Brown. I, you know, I mentioned it yeah. earlier, but four for seven in the fourth quarter, Ooh. and he got it done attacking the rim, mid-range game, long two where he got an inch of separation, just yep. rose up and hit an ice-cold shot. That yep. iced it. Mixing in a corner three as well. His 24 second half points, just credit to him, and I'll keep pounding it into the ground until I'm blue in the face. But what he has done to recreate himself and only get better with a yeah. guy that was just dragged through the mud all offseason long That's because right. of his poor handles, because of the payout yep. he got. Yep. But mentally, he wants the ball in those big spots. And you can say what you want about the Celtics and their roster construction. Why well, I think he is finals MVP, this 38 and 8. Uh, you know, performance that he put together. Yep. Yes, that is what glows, but the Celtics would not be in the spot in the playoffs, in the finals, if it wasn't for him showing up when they need him most. I think that's well said. I, I mean, just in that game, in game three, the calmness, you know, it was, it felt like all hell was breaking loose there. And, and I know certainly as someone who picked the Mavs to win game three, I thought, okay, here we go. This is their game. They're going to get, we have a series now. And Jalen Brown, just steady handedness, got it done, ice cold style. You know, you know, I, I, I love you, brother, but here's how I know we're spending so much time together. Even though physically we're apart here, right? During game three, literally, all I heard in my ear was your voice going back to game two saying this was a Mavericks chance, Trav, they're not going to win us. A game in this series, that was their chance. The Celtics gave them every chance to steal that game. They couldn't do it. And as game three was going on, and then the Celtics eventually iced it and pulled away, I said, my God, now, George, for sure this series is over because you called out some things in game two where the Mavs could have stole it, couldn't capitalize game three. Same thing. That's two games in a row now where you were close but no cigar. George, I think they get smoked at home in game four. This is a wrap, brother. I would just like to shout out the recovery I have from going Mavericks in six on Hold My Banner and saying Mavericks in seven on another uh, piece, you know, of beautiful media outlet, which my buddy Ben Stevens anchors, to now who went, right? After game two, you're like, I think the Mavericks win game three. I'm like, bro, it's going to be a sweep. We're like, how are we doing this? This is not the Mavericks team we saw, but it takes a special Celtics team to take them out of their personnel. And yeah. we saw certain guys on the map stepping up, like P.J. Washington. He is strong enough to keep up with Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. He just has to stay in front of him, and he was making right. plays like that towards the end, yeah. stepping up, forcing turnovers. The Celtics, tired legs, started playing the hero ball, which we hate to see, trying to shoot off the dribble, ending the ball movement, you know, the drive-in and kickouts that we saw, but also that was performing well for them. Because even when it's corner three missed by Tatum, what does he do next possession? Drive in. Derek White, Al Horford. I'm talking ball movement here. Find yep. JB opposite corner. He knocks down a three. That's what's big. And what the Celtics got away from when the Mavericks began their run, but then what they returned to of put your head down and I credit Jalen Brown to this again. He just has the confidence in him and he knows he has it. I'm going to put my head down. 
go to my spot, get the shot, and continue to hunt Kyrie Irving. But that's what I see. It's just the Mavericks, credit to them, taking a historically great team, getting it tight, keeping it close at certain points in the game. The last two late, but just cream rises to the top. The Celtics team is way too talented. And it's the guys and their leaders, like Drew Holiday, like Derek White, that clutch three from the wing, man. Yeah. He's cold-blooded. He steps up to the moment. And also Jayla Brown stepping up when they need them most. And it comes down to... It's a make or miss league. The priority when it comes to basketball is putting it in the cup, and the Celtics have the guys that have continually done it in this finals.